Here's Brody Brazil. You know, there's an old trick question of aviation. It goes like this. Hey, what makes an airplane fly? Let me diagram this out for you here. The answer is pretty simple. It's not lift. <laughs> it's money. That's what keeps an airplane fly flying right there is money. But no, in this video, we're here to talk about lift. It's one of the four basic forces of flight. Obviously, lift, opposing weight. Here's thrust if the plane is going in that direction. And here is the drag that is holding it back. So we know that lift is a thing. We know it's necessary to overcome weight in flight. But how exactly is it created? Let me do my bad rendering of a wing here. Uh, let me help you out with the cord line. Let me also help you out with some relative wind here. So now you can kind of visualize the things at play. And let me give you Bernoulli's principle here at first. So we have the wing striking the stagnation point and then splitting across the upper camber of the wing as well as the lower camber of the wing. And generally they meet right there at the trailing edge. Now Bernoulli's principle says that as the velocity of a fluid increases, its pressure decreases. That relative wind on the top side has to go a farther distance to catch up. So because it's sped up, its pressure went down. There's low pressure on the top and the pressure is higher on the bottom. Now, what we're spelling out here with Bernoulli's principle is that a suction effect is taking place. And I have no reason to doubt this. We can see, for example, wingtip vortices. There's definitely higher pressure on the bottom and lower pressure on top. But are you telling me that that alone is what's keeping this airplane afloat? That a vacuum effect is counteracting some of the drag, but all of the weight of these wings and the airplane itself? That can't be it, right? So here's the other half of it, and that's Newton's third law, which goes like this. For every action, right, there's the action, the relative wind, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let me do that again. Action, reaction, action, reaction. This seems a lot more feasible to me of how an airplane creates lift. That relative wind is hitting the lower camber of the wing. It's deflecting. It's reacting. I mean, think about putting your hand outside of a car window when you're the passenger. And as you kind of play with it a little bit, and depending on how fast the car's going and the angle of your hand, right, it depends what those two variables are, how high and how much your hand is going to get pushed up. It could be as simple as that. Uh, think if you're water skiing, for example. Pretend that this wing right here is like a water ski. The water is hitting the bottom of it. Action creates reaction. So to me, this is way more believable of the two theories. I know there's arguments on both. Ask one of your flying friends. Ask what their belief in lift is. It's fun to have this conversation. Quite honestly, it probably does take both principles at play. But I truly believe that Newton Third's law for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I think this is the ticket to lift. But let me know what you think in the comments section below.